And as it's 6.01 and we have a lot of folks that are already on the call, I'm just gonna jump right in, if that's okay with folks. Uh, welcome, as I said, I'm Christina Zahorek, the president of the Illinois Democratic County Chairs Association. And you are here tonight on this Zoom call on one of our virtual training sessions uh, for a very informal Q&A with myself and my, the, the chair of our leadership circle, and that's Kevin Conlin. And I'm gonna toss it over to Kevin pretty quickly. I, was, I suspect a lot of folks on this call um, know or read about you, Kevin, but if you want to give a little bit of a background or bio, I think that might be helpful too. So well, good evening. Uh, go ahead. Can everybody hear me, I hope? Uh, well, like all of you, um, I just have someone who's always been active in democratic politics. I was a committeeman for 15 years and on the state central committee and township supervisor all in the south suburbs and most recently co-chaired uh, Hillary's campaign in 08 and, and 16, and I've also done a lot of fundraising, but always as a volunteer like you. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about what to do during these turbulent times of uh, COVID-19. Um, when you think about campaigns, you think of things like uh, rallies where you're shaking hands, the door knocking, uh, the public appearances, that camaraderie, that team spirit of collegiality, working sure shared values of trying to get your candidate or, or party to win. And this time is gonna be different. Um, this time is gonna be a little more out of the box. And it's gonna require that those running for office and organizations and counties, parties, really uh, strive to be creative and thinking out of the box. You can do the usual things, the phone banking and robot calls and virtual house parties and things like that that you can do. But what you want to do is just um, continue to, you know, build camp enthusiasm for the campaign. And I think what COVID does, it gives you some unique opportunities to actually be uh, a better candidate. Uh, and if you look at, uh, there's a woman named Amy Kennedy who's running for Congress today in New Jersey. You go to her website, about a third of the website is resources on COVID-19. So as a candidate for Congress, she's saying, I'm going to be a problem solver and I'm going to help you navigate COVID-19 right now. So think of me as someone that's already looking for solutions and wants to be helpful to you. So I think the extent that you can be involved in uh, community activities like the food banks and all the things that we're doing with um, in communities to support each other during these times will also allow you to uh, get a foothold in your community. Um, but why don't we go to some questions, Christina, that might be more interesting than me pontificating. Uh, but I think um, I would just say one thing, and I kind of want to leave this thought with you uh, because I think it's so important. I've been in politics for a long time, as all of you have. In the history of Illinois, the most successful program to this day has been Speaker Madigan's Family and Friends, where I give a note to 20 people and say, Kevin Conlon really thinks Christina Zorick would be great as a member of Congress. Please vote because I know and trust her. And that, there's nothing, no money, no ads, no TV, radio, that's still the most effective thing we've ever seen in Illinois. And you can do that uh, like, no, like any other time. And you should just think of how to even do it more effectively. So the tools are still there to win as Democrats, but I think you have to be more creative and think out of the box. Dan, you have some questions or you want to? Yep, we do, yeah. Thanks for unmuting me, sorry about that. And thank you, Kevin, and you're absolutely right. And, and you know, taking that idea of the friends and family outreach, um, we are at somewhat of an advantage in this kind of advanced technological age with the use of this virtual space to reach out, not only using um, regular postal mail or postcards, we've seen that writing um, a personal postcard has encouraged voters to get out and actually vote that also can be used in a campaign, but also reaching out in your social media uh, through your email links. And um, I will dig out the, the, the link, but there is a, depending upon the level of your campaigning, um, uh, there is a, uh, uh, 
it was developed by a gentleman here in Chicago, actually, that moved out to Silicon Valley. But doing this kind of uh, voter circle is what they had called it, um, using your email system combined with the voter file in order to reach those people that you know that live in your uh, uh, district where you're running for campaigns and or your friends who might have friends of theirs that live in your district too. And the idea behind it is that you reach out via an email to say exactly the same thing that Kevin had described. Um, you know, this is a candidate that I know and trust. I think uh, you should vote for them. Here's who they are. Send this information to your friends as well. And just kind of building that out. Um, and I will find that and put it up in the chat box. But Dan, did you want to jump to some questions so we can um, assist folks? Yes, uh, thank you, President Sahorik. And I'd like to remind everyone, if you have any questions uh, for either President Sahorik or for uh, uh, Chair uh, Kevin Conlin, please uh, leave them in the chat box so we can get to them. Uh, we had some questions come in before we started tonight. Uh, and why don't we start with a, a big one? Should we be out knocking on doors right now? Well, you want to go? Yeah, I was, it was like uh, I was I was looking for the link. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I will say this. You know, um, I think that for most people, right now, going door to door in that grassroots effort is probably not the most welcome. Um, one of the things I think that was uh, important that Kevin also mentioned is we know through through polling in particular from groups like Rust Belt Rising that what the community or the voters are really interested in is what is it that you are going to do to be helpful to them, particularly in this time of need and crisis. And so Kevin's comments about, um, you know, food banks, food pantry, COVID resources, those are really striking home right now with, with voters. And, and it doesn't matter the side of the aisle that you're on. They're looking for leaders and people that have solutions to the problems that they face every single day. Two, I do know that there are some candidates that are currently out going door to door and door knocking. But those are candidates that are already elected or already so well known in their community because they, they've continually been door knocking. And I think in particular of Karina Villa, uh, house rep uh, down in the, uh, uh, out of West Chicago. Um, and she's, I think, District 40, uh, 49, and she's running for the Senate seat. So she's actually out door knocking, but she's never stopped, really. She took a small break uh, when COVID broke, but the community knows her. Um, and she's doing it using social distancing techniques. So, for example, um, and I don't know if she's doing this part of it, but we, we, we have seen this with um, a couple of other candidates. They have sent out a postcard into their community where they're going to be, their precinct where they're going to be ahead of time to say, I'm going to be in your neighborhood on such and such a day. I hope I connect with you um, using social distance and I will be masked. And so then, you know, has um, a, a walk piece, goes out uh, on that day. If the person's there at the door, steps away from the door, you know, says hello and they're masked, it's a very short, or leaves literature and then moves on. So again, there is a difference because these are uh, known, they're known in their communities and, and the, the folks that I know that are doing it for the most part are, are folks that are elected and running for re-election. So I will say that. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, I would kind of proceed with great caution as far as knocking if you don't know the family before you go there. And it's a good opportunity to write a note or email to say, I'd, would have loved to knock on your door this Saturday afternoon, but I want to be respectful of what, you know, COVID-19 and that explosion or anything. But please know I'm running for office and would really care for your, really would love your support. If you have any questions, please call me. Hopefully I'll get to meet you in person and use this as an opportunity to, you know, get out of knocking on some doors too and reach more of them in different creative ways. Because uh, door knocking is a very labor, labor intensive thing. There's nothing like it, nothing works better, but it, it takes hours and hours to really do it right, doesn't it, Christina? <laughs> yes. And, and certainly, too, we also know that, um, you know, in lieu of, you know, the second best, obviously, in lieu of door knocking is um, uh, making those phone calls, right? And what we are finding with a number of not only our volunteers, 
volunteers for the party, but also our candidate have been making these kind of wellness COVID checks and really kind of dialing down and targeting um, those uh, voters as well, just like you would if you were door knocking. So not necessarily um, checking in or doing a wellness call for everyone, but using the database of Vote Builder and finding uh, that universe that you need to reach in order to get out to vote for Vote For You. Um, and it's not only just COVID information, but I would argue that we are really in GOTV mode right now because of the wonderful Democrats that we have in the state of Illinois, we have an expanded ability to vote in our state. Um, 40 days prior to the election, you can early vote, you can early satellite vote, you can vote by mail, and you can vote on election day. And under the changes under the election code that were just uh, enacted by our Democrats down in Springfield and signed by the governor, you can apply right now for your vote by mail ballot. And as a candidate, one of the best things that you can do in terms of resources is to get someone to apply for a vote by mail ballot and chase it and track them down. And you can keep track of that and you have information through the, uh, through the uh, voter uh, database that we have here in the state of Illinois. Um, so, and, and you can apply right now. So I think that is really, really good. And something to think about and remember is that a lot of the voters, I think that we as Democrats have counted on, consistent Democratic voters, like no matter what, they will go and vote and they will vote for the Democrat. They are of a certain age and that population may or may not be really interested in going out to the polls this cycle. So making sure that they know that they can get a vote by mail ballot and that it's a safe way to vote, it is an effective way to vote, and uh, their ballot will, you know, make a difference, right? It will actually get counted. Um, so that's something I, I've spent actually this morning quite a bit of time talking to some older voters who just show up every day on election day and are concerned and worried not only about COVID, but they're worried about actually using vote by mail because they've been hearing um, false stories and false narratives uh, in the news about it. So that's another population, I think, that as your campaigns, you can really target um, very easily using Vote Builder. And uh, we also know from data that if someone in this population in particular applies for that vote by mail ballot, they are more likely than most other groups to actually pull the trigger and vote. So that's, that's, you know, that's bankable voters for you. President Zorik, why don't we circle back to one question that did pop up on the door knocking? Um, Cause there are some people who are still hesitant about doing door knocking right now. Uh, normally on a campaign side, we don't encourage um, doing lit drops, but is that something, is that a, a usable way for us to campaign? And should we be doing a like personal message on any of that? as we're going door to door, or how, how should we approach lit drops? You want to go, Christine? Well, it looks like President Sahorek uh, muted herself okay. on accident. All Let's right. see if we can get her unmuted here. I would, well, I'll just jump in and yes. say that, um, obviously, if you have the luxury to mail things, that's really great, because again, there's going to be some people that are going to resent that you even approach their mailbox, given the anxiety a lot of people are feeling. So I think you have to be really careful. Um, I think what's going to happen during this time period, normally, you know, I've been involved with a lot of campaigns where they seem to have spurts and starts, and then all of a sudden they mysteriously gel at the last two weeks. They get this tremendous get out the vote effort, and they peak right at the right time in election day and they're victorious. That's not gonna happen. What's gonna happen is because of, as Christina just outlined with these people voting by mail overwhelmingly, we, we have to be organized and very disciplined in September and getting people lined up. And then when they get their ballots in October, we have to say, be sure to mail them in. Have you mailed them in yet? So it's the campaigns that really work hard in September and October they're gonna win. They get out the vote and all that stuff is, is not gonna be very relevant. And um, I think that's part of the calculus now. Uh, traditionally campaigns have spent a lot of money on what we would call field. Uh, I talked to a couple of campaigns and there's not many people hiring field this year. Uh, they're hiring more social media and other types of skill sets. Yeah, and, and just to piggyback on that, you know, in terms of lit drops, um, uh, 
um, you know, Dan, it's true, you know, as the, uh, that much in the lit drops because it, it's, it's the county organizations are really there to support all the candidates, right? And our job um, really in the county organization is to, to drive out Democratic voters, right? That's our job. We identify who they are, we get them to go out to vote. That allows the campaign and the candidates then to drive out their voters and to really kind of find those middle of the road, swing voters, whatever you want to call them, that are coming out and are, are tipping that balance in your favor. The county organization is doing their job. The campaign is doing their job. Issue organizations are doing their job to get out the voters for you as well. And labor is, is getting um, their voters out too. So with all that layering, that's how you're, you know, that's how you're, you're moving forward to be successful. Um, and I think, you know, Dan had asked about, you know, a personal note, I'll tell you a little story about uh, one of our candidates out here in McHenry County um, was running in a, for a county board race. Uh, we know that uh, McHenry County is difficult for Democrats. It's difficult to run as a Democrat. You usually, you know, run as Christina Zahorek, who happens to be the Democrat, right? Um, and really spent a lot of time quite successfully uh, at the time, not was able to still knock doors, but left personal messages on his campaign lit. It took a lot of time, but to leave a note that said, sorry, I missed you. Here's my uh, phone number. You know, hope I see you again soon. Uh, whatever the case may be, I'm hosting a town hall. Hope to see you there. Um, and that was actually very, very effective. And I think what it was, it, it was that personal touch, right? The ability to to make that personal connection. You can still do that in your social media, I believe, in your mailings, in your postcards, in your friend-to-friend -friend contacts. And I'm sure Kevin can tell me, was it Tip O'Neill that said uh, something about, uh, I'm gonna forget the quote now, about retail politics, you know. Uh, uh, politics is local. Yes, yes, exactly. And, and everybody wants to be asked, right? Most yeah. of the candidates I know forget to make the ask, will you vote for me? He tells, right? a, famous, he tells a famous story in that book of, his neighbor um, went up to him after the election and said, you know, sorry, I lost, you lost tip. And, and he said, well, thank you for voting for me. He said, no, I, I didn't vote for you. you I, I didn't hear anything from you. And the moral of the lesson is you have to ask. This is also, another point I want to make is this is also a great opportunity to do things in, uh, you know, for example, the governor candidate for Vermont did this outdoor concert um, where speakers could talk and it was like an old drive-in theater. Uh, people could do things like that on a farm or in a parking lot that's empty. The reason why it may not, I can't guarantee you're gonna get, initially get a good crowd, but what you're gonna do is get some free press associated with doing something creative, doing something out of the box in light of COVID-19 to have a, a really a, a, uh, an event where people stay in their cars socially distant, but you still have an opportunity to talk to people. Kevin, that's actually a good transition to another question that we had come in. Um, you come from a, a communications background. You've helped a lot of candidates on, on the comm side. Uh, what would you recommend to help with the candidates to amplify that? Is that uh, writing letters to the editor? Is it sending out press releases? Um, you know, is it earned media with like radio talk shows? How would you, if you were advising a candidate right now, would you uh, advise on some of the communication stuff? So in, the, in that example, if I was going to do it at an outdoor event at a farm in, in Bloomington, Illinois, what would I do? Well, I know the panograph probably wouldn't put it in the newspaper. So I have to think, how can I reach those folks? And I would reach through the social media, uh, social, uh, progressive groups, college Democrats at ISU, Illinois Wesleyan, and think of those other avenues and networks of relationships of people that care about it, uh, the issues, because uh, it's you know so hard to get a local newspaper to put anything in of a partisan nature supporting one candidate. Sometimes they'll let you get a, a letter in, letter the editor in, but even that's kind of rare. Um, and we unfortunately know many of the downstate papers are really very very Republican and are not going to do giving much free publicity. So you're going to have to be entrepreneurial and creative. Um, and it's also, you know, to that point, you know, we also, to be creative, we, and reaching out to people, um, and certain, certain 
uh, segments of, of our voter population really like, you know, using their phones and, and texting. And we also know that that's a, uh, another really good way to get out your message using something like Hustle, um, that program um, as well to, to reach your voters way. And, and, and there's a, uh, and I, again, I, I'll make sure that Dan sends these resources around. There's another um, uh, organization out in Silicon Valley that has created um, the ability to use software, uh, especially for people that don't know how to use it, um, really made it really easy. So you can do 15 second, 30 second uh, videos to be able to put up into your social media um, and use that in your Facebook and or on your, your Twitter, uh, or not your Twitter accounts, but your Instagram, or even for those brave souls that are on TikTok. Okay. Um, we had a good question come in uh, because we do have a, a lot of people that are on the call tonight. Uh, and again, want to remind everyone, please, if you have questions, put them in the chat box below. Uh, but uh, we, for some of the central and southern Illinois communities where we still don't have internet access and we don't have uh, a lot of reliable phone numbers, how would um, either of you recommend our, our candidates or county parties uh, contacting voters in those areas. Yeah, can you hear me? Sorry, my, my internet is going in and out as, as we speak. Um, but um, I would say, you know, that's where you got to fundraise, right? Because you still have the good old fashioned US Postal Service. And that's another way to reach people. And you, if you're, someone had asked earlier about a lip drop, if you're doing a lip drop and there's, you know, a bunch of you all in a little bag on a door hanger, how many folks are really going to be looking at, at that? Particularly as a campaign, you know, you're trying to target voters that are voting for you, not necessarily those folks that we know are going to show up all the time, every time at the polls, right? Um, so you want to make sure that you are timing, you know, your lip drops. And as Kevin said, you know, really, this is such, a, it's such an unusual time that folks are starting now to really kind of get to be, to be the person that's first in the door um, in the mailbox, if you will, right? Um, so that is something that's really important. I think there's nothing that, uh, there's nothing that's gonna necessarily replace that, right? A postcard, a letter, um, some other kind of mail. And, and I, it reminds me, you know, um, this is a long, <laughs> a long time ago. I remember walking from Paul Simon's mom to people in central and southern Illinois and deliver, hand delivering those letters uh, to, to the voters. Um, and again, it's kind of, you know, going back maybe to that really grassroots level in campaigning that will be helpful and successful, and it takes time. One thing that uh, you might think of that's obviously a traditionally old technique, but maybe now more relevant than ever in those areas is uh, yard signs because I, I see more yard signs now than almost you know, the thanking the healthcare workers and our, our signs about racial justice and equality. Uh, so there's a lot of signs, plus there's a lot of people home now. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's still a really way, because what you have to do in campaigns is show energy and inertia and momentum. And it, it's harder to do it in this environment. And you're looking for tangible ways and putting signs up is still a tangible way of showing energy and support. So I, and it's, it's cheap. Kevin, I think you just gave every campaign manager on the call tonight a, a minor or a mild heart attack by saying we need to do yard signs now. <laughs> um, that's not something we normally do. Um, but uh, it's a good point and we're seeing, I'm, I'm in Springfield and we're seeing a lot of signs popping up uh, down here as well. Um, try, trying to transition a little bit to the other big thing that we're getting questions on during COVID is fundraising. Um, it's a lot harder now. We can't do our, our standard cattle call type fundraisers. Um, Kevin, you, you've done a lot of work in the fundraising aspect. What are some kind of tips uh, that you would uh, give a candidate or a county party uh, to do some fundraising during this current environment? Well, the virtue, if you, 
it's obviously tough. I've participated in a number of them in the last couple of months, uh, and it helps if you can get somebody of prominence to be a guest speaker. So, and though it might seem at first blush hard, uh, people can call in, and you can, you'd be surprised how many important people might call in and say hello for five, 10 minutes. And so I would think very creatively, of, is there some special guest that you could call in that's a United States Senator or sports, somebody of prominence uh, to spruce up the event? Uh, the good thing about virtual fundraiser is really no overhead. Uh, so often when I was a committeeman, I used to do, um, I'd like to do brunches because I knew if I did a brunch, I'd get out of the liquor uh, that you have to pay if you do it on a Friday night. So you, you, know, you start to think creatively on how to save money. So the other thing with virtual fundraisers is um, I would tend to localize them more, maybe target a neighborhood or a, a precinct and try to uh, unify and get some energy to show that there's energy for you in a certain neighborhood in your community. And Park Forest would be uh, Lincolnwood section of Park Forest. You'd ideally like to do a little Lincolnwood virtual event and there'd be some connectivity among the people on the call because they're all in the same area. And they'd see their neighbors and friends, which is good for building support. President Zorik, I mean, do you want to jump in from a county party perspective on some of the things? I know we've had to cancel, um, our county parties are canceling their chicken dinners and fish fries and uh, our, our normal events. So what are some ideas you might have? So it's the same, it's kind of the same idea. And, and there's nothing, um, you know, So just as an example here in McHenry, we, we, we had uh, our big dinner, our, you know, we had one really big fundraiser that we do a year and it got kind of postponed because of COVID and eventually we had to cancel. Um, and then we just did an appeal, you know, we reached out and said, you know, we know that there's not going to be a dinner, um, but these are the things that we're working on here in the county to make sure that we grow the party and that we elect Democratic candidates up and down the ticket. Would you allow us generously and graciously to keep your money? basically. Um, we did have a thank you gift uh, that, that went out for some folks. Um, and that was actually, uh, people were very generous and understanding. I think a direct appeal is something that you association, right? We sent out uh, uh, bumper stickers and asked folks with the return envelope to, to please support us. But and it wasn't just a, I think, you know, one of the key things for the county organizations is explaining to your membership and to the folks you're reaching out to what you're using it for. Um, our party here in McHenry County, we don't give directly to candidates, but we do things to help all the candidates that are on the ballot, whether that's a digital ad buy, whether that's a mailing, whether that's sponsoring um, phone, virtual phone banks, you know, really, I think, I think a great idea that I saw Sean Caston's team do. Um, this was to, while well, people were uh, phone banking, whether it was for dialing for dollars for him and or uh, making sure uh, um, people were signing up to vote by mail, they did it in a Zoom call. So while your volunteers were working together, you could see each other calling and kind of give, build that camaraderie and spirit um, at the same time, ask questions in the chat box, et cetera, and was much more successful than people, you know, dialing for dollars on their own. Um, um, and to help out with that county or organization. I think, again, it's, it's um, there's nothing like that direct appeal, right? So, and uh, you're, you're kind of talking a little bit and about- And I think you can also come up- uh, President Sorek, and I want to kind of get to that, but uh, just remind folks again, if you have questions, please uh, drop them in the chat box. We'll try and get to as many as we can. Uh, a lot of good discussion going on right now with yard signs. Um, one thing I'll just point out is uh, you can put up yard signs at any point. Uh, check with your local municipalities if they are allowed right now. Uh, but the state of Illinois allows yard signs as a form of political expression to go up uh, at any point uh, during the, uh, the year. So I've already got my uh, Dick Durbin for U.S. Senate yard sign in the front lawn, and it'll be up until November. Um, <laughs> President Zorik, you were talking about phone banking and we have our rev project that we're doing with the association. Um, what can we do to increase uh, volunteer participation with uh, phone banking and get people a little bit more comfortable being on the phones? Because that's normally the last thing that a volunteer wants to do to help a campaign is, is to do phone banking. 
Well, I mean, I think it's like, it's like coordinating any kind of volunteer outreach, right? So, um, you know, again, I'm going to go back to Vote Builder. Vote Builder it was a really good tool. Some county organizations, both. And being able to, um, much of the, many of the phone numbers you'll be surprised are actually good phone numbers in Vote Builder. And they also have emails as well. So it provides you with the way to mine that data for volunteers. And because this is a presidential election cycle, we even now are starting to see more people coming out of the woodwork wanting something to do and wanting to volunteer and making sure you have something for them. And as Dan mentioned, the REV project, we're, we're about to kick off our second phase of that. And that's going in and calling uh, a universe of people that is the kind of drop off voter if you will. So the state party and the campaigns are looking at, and the uh, Vote for Fair Tax are all looking at a certain population um, that you'll see in the uh, election code, right, that are going to get mailed applications to vote by mail. So those are the last three elections. And then there's another pocket of people that aren't going to necessarily be contacted, and that's something that we're going to be working on in the county organizations. And having volunteers to make those phone calls um, through a Zoom meeting where you're able to get training, you're able to, to see each other doing it, um, is I think very, very helpful. And using those, uh, again, using those resources to not only troll for the volunteers, to pick up volunteers, but also then once you have those volunteers to go in and uh, encourage people to, to, to vote. Um, I think those are all very useful for our county organizations for sure. Kevin, what do, what do you think on uh, phone banking? Is that something, how do we get more people involved? Uh, and you're coming out of a, originally a ward or a township organization. Um, how were you able to, to get that uh, in the past? Well, I, you know, it's, like I said, I think it, one, phone calls obviously are very important. I think what is important as you're kind of changing some of the things that normally you keep track of, how many doors you knocked on in a given day, how many calls you made. Um, I think it's really good for campaigns and candidates to have matrixes of, of measurables every day. So maybe under this new paradigm we're living under, you know, how many text messages were sent, how many emails were sent, how many calls, but be disciplined to find maybe different measurables, but campaigns need measurables because you have to show that you're discipline and you have to peak at the right time which we are all agreeing that it's going to be September and October because we want them to send those the voters to send the ballots in earlier. The other thought that I've had um, is listen to some of the reading your thoughtful questions is uh, the idea of maybe even doing a webinar. So when I was trying to my area in Rich Township I got a nice note from somebody who's from the Park Forest so thank you um, but it had tradition that a Republican area and I wanted to build a, an organization that would attract people that were there for a lot of reasons uh, on different issues. So I would do a forum uh, uh, on social security, on affordable health care, and I would reach out to all these different groups and get new members coming. They say, well, this is a thoughtful organization. The Democrats care about the same issue. Why couldn't some of you do a webinar on COVID-19 and get a local doctor to talk about issues in the area and really localize it, but to be associated with them. The folks that care about COVID-19 in your community are engaged, they're reading the paper, they value science, they're gonna be Democrats, and those are your voters. So I would really just embrace them and find ways to connect with people that really are following this and care about it and, um, and show that you're savvy enough to care about it too and that you, you want to lead others and help everybody make good decisions, good public health decisions. So next question we have, I, I think is one, it, it's not directly related to COVID, but it's a, a broader question that I'm sure all of our candidates have, have had to face from time to time is how do we balance campaigning with working full time? Uh, and Kevin, I'll, I'll put this to you first. Um, is how, just with your experience with working with candidates, uh, the ones that, that might not have been able to, to, to step back from a career and, and to campaign full time, 
how were they able to split or how were you able to advise people to work, uh, continue a full-time job and then also campaign? Well, I have to tell you, I have to confess, I'm probably the worst person to tell you that because there's nothing I love more than a campaign and I just, I get so into it, it's all consuming for me. Uh, so, but I think you, it has to be all consuming if you really want to win. You really think of these campaigns as sprints and, uh, and you have this short window and it's really shortened now than ever before. Um, but I applaud anybody that's better adjusted than I am in trying to balance politics and work. I've failed miserably, as my family will tell you, where I, my passion has always been the campaigns and I, I tend to forget about everything else. I think uh, it's funny that you say that because I think there's something, you know, to that. I mean, right now it is, we, we are at, we are at the sprint. I feel our, uh, normally we wait until right around Labor Day to kind of have a big kickoff, but things are happening now because people can apply for those uh, ballots. Those, those applications are out now. And I also think that you have, because of what's happening, not only with COVID, but what's happening in Washington, more and more people are kind of, and it's a presidential year, right? More and more people are starting to pay attention outside of our bubble a little earlier. And I, re I remember, um, and I can't recall exactly who uh, uh, had said this, but at, in, at a campaign rally at one point, you know, the comment was made that, you know, all your kids are going to be fine if they're eating cereal for dinner. It's okay at home from work are put to the side so you can focus on your campaign. And again, it, there's nothing that substitutes for the candidate um, in doing all of these things. So uh, it is important to have a support team. And whether that is your extended family, if they're still talking to you at this point, uh, or uh, your trusted kitchen cabinet and friends that you can call on because one of the, the most important things that I always uh, talk to our candidates about is there's one thing you can never get back. And that's time. And the clock is ticking. So uh, every second and every moment matters between now and September 24th when they start to mail out those ballots. That's the first early vote uh, day is September 24th. Um, and that's not a lot of time. And the positive is that people are home still. So you know they're there. And a lot of folks are done and they've blown through all their Netflix uh, shows that they've wanted to watch, right? And now they can watch you, whether it's on a, a short video that you've done, on your phone that you've posted up on social media or whatever the case may be. So um, it is a difficult balance. I don't know that there is one. not at work is all about I would say is all about winning and campaigning. Yeah, and then just uh, I'll add from a the staff perspective, it doesn't get any easier working full time and, and campaigning and having a family at home. And, and some things do have to kind of take a step back. Um, and it's something you have to learn with and, and it's going to change as it goes. Um, I remember my first big campaign in 14. Um, I missed a lot of uh, family time uh, that I know I can't get back, but the, the campaign that I was working on was important and it was important for my family. So um, it, right now everything is focused on November uh, and you need to be able to kind of figure out how, how your family uh, life and personal life work around that. A um, couple of just uh, drop-ins real quick too. We had a question pop up. Is there a central place for information on yard signs. Um, if you reach out to us, uh, dan at ildcca.org, um, happy to put you in touch with any of the, the union print shops uh, throughout the state to handle any of your yard signs, walk pieces, any of that info. Uh, we only work with union uh, printers uh, and, and that's, uh, we'll be able to recommend one for your area if you uh, still need help with that. Uh, thank you, President Sahark, for putting that in the chat. Um, also, just continue to keep your questions coming uh, as we're going along uh, and we get a little bit closer to wrapping up. So, uh, President Sahark, why don't we do this next question for you? Um, you've always pushed with the organization of making sure we have a strong social media presence. Mm -hmm. um, 
given how everything is with COVID right now, what kind of presence, not just making sure that we were getting more likes and more follows, but what information should we be pushing out there, not just to help with COVID and, and resources, but to help our candidates. And if I'm a candidate to help uh, to get votes. That's a short question. <laughs> So, I mean, I think that, you know, in, in our training that we do with our candidates and with our county parties too, if you're posting on social media, you're not just reposting something, an article or something from somewhere else, right? You're also creating some original content or you're having something. There's always an ask that you're making, right? We posted something, some whatever the, the, the latest atrocity that Trump has done, right? But there has to be a, 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 a call to action right? So it's, you know, sign up here. You, you want Trump out of office? Sign up here to help my campaign. Donate here to my campaign, right? Um, most of the folks that are running against the other side of the aisle are probably running against someone um, who is in their, in their background or in their social media has supported this, this administration. And you can use that. You should be able to tell the truth about your opponent. And um, I just, you know, I saved the voice that I had a woman call uh, uh, our local county party. She thought she was calling the Republican Party, but she somehow got our number. But she was a Republican. She was so incensed with her own party. She was telling them that she was chucking them, and I won't use the language, uh, and moving over to the Democrats. And I called her up to say, thank you. We're a big tent. We're happy to have you. And she was mortified because she says she's a good Christian woman, but she's had it up to here. And so thinking about, you know, often there's this story arc when you're doing your campaign and you're talking about, you know, an introduction piece, and then you might be talking about, you know, what your vision is, right? And at the end, if you've got, you know, you still got opponent, right? And, and telling the truth about them and providing contrast between yourself and, and the other side. And that's something in social media too. It's not necessarily to uh, have a debate, but it's again to provide contrast. Um, that's a little bit kind of off, off the, the question you asked, Dan, I think, but, um, but I think that's important too, and to think about how you're contrasting yourself from your opponent. Okay, Kevin, do you want to jump in on any of the social media stuff that, that you see that's out there or anything that's, that's trending that's... No, but I, I was just thinking of, you know, we were talking about ideas to generate interest, and a terrific guy, as you all know, is Congressman Bill Foster. But he's a scientist, physicist, but he's also the leading person on the Democratic side in Congress on COVID-19. And he would be a really thoughtful guest speaker. I think would, you know, if he has time, he's the kind of guy that will make time and be a guest speaker and kind of give a federal context of what's happening. And he is very interesting and thoughtful. But there are people like that that want to be helpful to all of you. And that's why Christina and Dan and I and others, um, you know, I hope you'd feel comfortable calling us and getting ideas and using us as a resource because we, we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't want all of you to be successful and, and thrive and for Democrats to have a great November. Um, I see that Julie Gondar asked about whether the county party should handle attack mode, if you will, or candidates and stay away from negative. And it's, um, I don't know that I really see it as negative. I see it as just, again, telling the truth. And sometimes it depends on what the issue is. Um, and, and I think, you know, from, from what we can tell from uh, some really good polling data is that folks, you know, the number one issues and being consistent on your message, right, um, for your community. It's, it's you know, healthcare still reigns number one. Um, people are concerned about their own health care and having access to health care. And, you know, the second really big thing is, again, as Kevin uh, alluded to at the very beginning, is how are you leading in your community and helping people with the real issues and the concerns and the fears that they face? And another example I'll use in my own county, we have uh, legislators down in Springfield whom when their constituencies, regardless of side of aisle, called them to say, I need help, for example, with IDEA. Yes. And their response was, we'll just keep calling. 
So they came to us, to the party, because we don't have a Democratic legislator. And I was able then to turn them to a neighboring legislator uh, in a different county who has an open door policy in order to get the help they need. But if you're running for, for office, you know, there's no reason why you cannot be that resource and that leader to be able to step up and say, you know, uh, uh, these local issues, you know, it's about filling the pothole. It's about getting people the help they need. It's about giving them information about United Ways 211 or about the local food pantry or organizing a drop off at your house or campaign or office in order to deliver to the local food pantry. Those kinds of things. Because again, you know, those are the real struggles that, that folks are facing right now. And certainly you can do a press release about that. Certainly you can, you know, highlight the fact that people are coming to you if, that, 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 if that's a story that you can tell, right? Um, and again, on attack ads, I think, I think it's, it depends on what the issue is and what the situation is. But, you know, again, I think about McHenry County, we've got a guy, Alan Skillicorn, who is just, He's a big Trump fan, I'll say that. Um, and uh, uh, certainly, you know, I suspect that the Democrat Suzanne Ness that's running against him will tell the truth about him, um, as will the party. So here's a, a really good question I know is going to have uh, a big impact um, with, depending on how everything plays out in the fall with COVID, is how do we engage college students? Uh, <laughs> one, to help with your campaigns, but how do we engage them if they come back to campus then to get them involved uh, or interested in down ballot races? I know like U of I is, is gonna be really interested in helping Betsy Londrigan, um, but how do we get them to help down ballot as well? Christina, do you wanna take it and then- Well, see? I mean, I think it's, I think so much of it is, again, it's, it's using, you know, you, you wanna reach, you wanna reach them where they live right and that that's on their phone I would say and using you know uh, uh, um, using a hustle or something of that nature to a texting program in order to get out your information and um, uh, and also your name um, and reminding folks to go all the way down you know all the way down the ticket it's funny you know I get I still get calls from folks that say we want to know about the Democratic candidates which are the good ones and like they're all what do you mean which other they're all good just go down the ballot vote for every Democrat you want to correct the problem that we see in, in Washington? Be like Illinois. Elect all the Democrats. Um, but again, um, uh, my sense is reaching out to where, they, where they're active and where they live, and that's on social media and on their phone. Yeah, that's how I would get them involved. They, you know, the young people have uh, care so much about some of these important issues. And, you know, just tell them candidly, listen, these are skills that my generation is not good at. This is going to be won or lost based on social media this time. How can you help? What can you do? How do you reach your network and just embrace them because they have tremendous ideas and energy and um, you never underestimate a young person that has a passion for these issues. And I think if you appeal to them that way to say, you have a skill that I don't have, and you can help us win because of your unique skills. Please bring them to the table. Then it's fun for them and they feel valued, not just, you know, can you drop some signs off tonight? You know, something to piggyback on that, um, you know, we've been tracking here in our county, I'm sure like in many other counties, Black Lives Matter, uh, there seem to be um, pop-up organizations or groups in almost every city in our county um, on this issue. And uh, there were some, there were, was some press coverage and reaching photo to reaching out to them um, from your campaign to say, you know, listen, this is something I'd, I'd like to do a Zoom meeting with you and your friends to hear about your issues, right? And then certainly bring them in and be able then to ask if they want to be helpful with the campaign because what we're finding, at least I can you know, speak for McHenry County, is that a lot of these young people that have stepped up very organically um, on this issue in particular don't necessarily have a broad understanding of, you know, how things work, right? The civics of it. Um, the difference between the sheriff's office and the police uh, uh, municipalities, um, how those police municipalities, how those officers get trained, how they get chosen to be police officers, all of that, that gambit, and where they can be effective um, as a group, not only in terms of the issue that they care about, 
but also then more importantly, electing the people that care also about their issue. Because as I, as I said to, to several of them in a, in a smaller meeting is that, you know, we can yell all we want at a protest and we can demand and, and, and show up at these meetings Uh, when they have them, uh, and demand folks that are serving in those positions don't have to listen to us. They don't need us to vote for them. They still win, right? So it's making those arguments to show that you're the candidate that's going to allow them to have that voice and to have that power to make the change on those issues that they really care about. And going through the newspaper and finding some of those names, looking them up on Vote Builder, and making an outreach is what I would suggest. Okay. Kevin, you had brought up something I wanted to uh, go back to and, and just remind folks we're, we're going to try and keep this in about an hour. So if you have any other last, you know, last questions you want to ask, please get them in the chat here. But Kevin, you talked about doing outreach and, and getting more people involved in some stuff that, you know, traditional campaigns might not be used to. Uh, and we've had some questions come in about uh, texting and it's the, the new thing that uh, the last couple of cycles people have been using more and more texting outreach. It, what have you seen uh, from candidates that you've worked with or how, how would we go about then using texting uh, to impact voters uh, for the election? Well, I don't wanna oversell myself. I don't feel like I'm an expert in that area. I think increasingly all the literature says that it's you know, effective and cost effective and encourage people to use texting as a, a way to reach people. A point that's a little different, but I, I think it's an important one to make, and it follows on what Christina just talked about, uh, is a campaign should think of themselves as a portal. And they're connecting to all these different, whether it's COVID, people that are concerned about health, um, affordable health care, disability. And you, you want to build those networks. And uh, I learned that when I was township supervisor there were about 75 not-for-profits and it was unbelievable. I did an appreciation breakfast where we brought all of them together on a Saturday morning to say thank you. And I was shocked that the cancer support center didn't know the hospice or the, you know, the most obvious people who didn't know each other. So then I said, well, we're going to make a mailing list of the 75 not-for-profits because we want you working together. And then all of a sudden the township became the depository of Operation Central for 75 not-for-profits and uh, counties can do that that you want to be this hub and portal and connecting groups of similar values uh and you kind of become operation central by doing that because you do it by default and that no one else is really doing it maybe the county health department but you can really be this great source of a lot of information where people in state could be go to your website and say you know, I, I want to do something about where do I go on uh, climate change? Where do I go on uh, so racial justice? Where do I go on criminal sentencing? And you are this, this portal of energy and connecting people. You know, something that, that just reminds me too, Kevin, is that, you know, a lot of the issue groups and, and labor organizations that are, are friendly, um, that we feel as our, our sister partner uh, organizations and groups are also meeting still. And they may not be meeting face to face, but they're also doing Zoom meetings. And there's nothing that prevents a candidate from reaching out to those issue organizations or labor and saying, you know, can I come in on your next meeting, meet your membership um, and do it virtually as well. Just as another thing that popped in my head. With the, the texting, I know we, we have gotten some questions. How much do you think is too much? Um, I know before the, the March primary, I was getting four or five texts a day from the presidential campaigns, um, and I was going to vote no matter what. Uh, but how much is too much with just an average voter? <laughs> I don't know that I'm average. <laughs> uh, I think that's a, that's a tough question. I mean, I think, you know, so much, you know, we know that there's going to be this onslaught of messaging that's about to hit it's almost as if i feel as if you know the everyone's kind of holding them holding back at the gate and starting august 1st we know that that's going to be the first kind of rollout for uh, uh vote by mail applications for example from the secretary of state then there's going to be another 
to roll out uh, shortly thereafter because the window is very short, right? You know, it's August 1st, September 24th, first day that the ballots come out. And, you know, obviously the sooner you're getting in that queue, the better. Um, that's about all I can say. And, and again, you know, if, if uh, we'd like to think that, that um, you know, all the Democrats that are going to go vote are going to go straight down the ticket, but we know that for many of our Democrats, you're going to need more, a lot more than just the Democrats coming out and voting. You're going to need other voters that are coming out and voting for you. So you need to locate and find who those people are. And I guarantee you, if they're getting a text from the candidate really wanting you to make sure you go vote, I don't see that you've mailed your ballot back in, whatever the case may be, that's a message that's going to be appreciated. Okay. So we're coming up on about an hour for the, the session and uh, we had promised at the start that we'd keep it to around an hour. Uh, before we kind of wrap up here, I do want to remind everyone, uh, one, make sure you are following the, the IDCCA on our social media channels, uh, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we are recording tonight's meeting. We will be posting it online on YouTube tomorrow. So if you have anything that you might have missed, uh, we're going to be posting it there so you can rewatch the video, share it with your your campaign or your county parties. Uh, make sure that uh, everyone at least has an opportunity to hear from this. Uh, and then if you have any questions or any concerns about anything, please reach out to us uh, and let us know. Uh, with that, President Sohor, do you want to go ahead and wrap up the evening? Yeah, and again, I think, you know, the, this is, I'm, I'm really optimistic about this year and about uh, Democratic, uh, the Democratic organization, the Democratic Party in particular. I think that much like in, you know, the, the last presidential cycle, you saw this kind of women of a certain age coming out and, and really wanting to be engaged and to do and to make things right and to make things better. And I feel that there's a second wave of young people that are now kind of stepping up and wanting to be engaged and to be civically active and actually do their patriotic duty and vote and vote for you and vote for Democrats. And all we need to do is to make sure that we are getting them the information that they need to go vote, to go vote safely and to vote for you. And uh, all there, I think, you know, the headlines are gonna be on November 3rd, another blue waves tsunami hit our nation. And, uh, but it, it will require us to keep diligent and to keep on track, as Kevin uh, mentioned several times, and to be really focused and measured and making sure you are using your time um, to be successful and to win. I will make sure that the resources that I mentioned earlier are sent out to you in an email. I'll make sure Dan sends that out. Um, thank you, Dan, in advance. And uh, again, we're here to help you and to help you be successful. successful and win. And thank you, Kevin, for taking the toe. Um, and uh, we're here as a resource for you. So go out there, win. And um, I look forward to calling all of you honorable at some point because you've won. Good night, everybody. Thank you.